It's time for another tale from the glass-guarded world. Ashley plays Terra Dane, the human fighter. Josh is Zartok, the tiefling wizard. And Gaston, the rogue and bard. Jessica is Coral Pedricor, the Genasi druid. And Mama Sass, the half-orc bard and barbarian. Chris plays Aster Fortuna, the half drow rogue and bard extraordinaire. Corellan's Needle and the Neogi Mind Spider are still locked together. The Glass Guardians have managed to sever one of the arms holding their ship in place. Four more arms remain, as well as a grappling beak, but one of the arms is nearly destroyed. They've also managed to disable a heavy ballista and remove its ammunition from the top of the enemy ship. Now Mama Sass and Papa Gaston have decided to climb down the ladder on the side of the Neogi ship and board it to try to free their own ship. What awaits them aboard? Or will they immediately change their mind and force the Neogi to take action instead? It's going to get ugly this time, folks. Let's get back to it. Gaston's plan. Let's let's go down there. Uh, okay. All right. I I do like being heroic. I just don't want you guys to get hurt. But why do we think that this trap down there? Is it because uh, the Zaza people went? I don't understand what. Because they 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 uh, let us over here and then they climb back down. Of course, there's a trap down. And there. he told us he wanted us to come down here. He wanted us to go to his parlor. <laughs> oh, that sounds gross. Okay, okay, let's okay, let's go back since Tara's making good work on these things. <laughs> okay, Tara, make another round of attacks. Uh, they're gonna do some more repairs. Coral and Mama Sass are going to uh, take the giant eagle to the bottom of the ship to start attacking one of the lower. Oh, that's brilliant! I then I could fly and attack the other arm down there. We'd each have an arm. And Gaston is by himself. I'll just... I think Gaston should climb across with yeah. Garlos Nansna. He's so scared. And start hitting the other arm. I, you can come with us if you want. We've, yes, we've... Gaston doesn't okay. want to be by himself. Please let me come with you. Nansna, Garlos, go back across. We're gonna we're gonna try to free the ship. Yeah, Garlos, go do a bunch of work on that other ship on our on one of those arms with your mighty muscles. Okay, so to be clear, you have made it over here, and now you're all going back to your own ship, except for Coral. And Mama Sass. And Gaston, we're taking the eagle to the bottom of the ship. No, I'm just going to let Mama Sass and Gaston go uh, to the bottom of the ship to attack one of the arms that are at the bottom of the ship. Okay. (laughs) And your eagle can also attack, right? (laughs) I mean, yeah. Yeah. The Neogi are exhausted by our antics. Yep. This is where you, you drop the gif of Zach Galifianakis doing all of the calculations from that one movie. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, I do. You are not playing by their rules, nope. so we're going to have to change the rules. I don't like that. <laughs> you climb down there. Um, do you want the damage from my head? Yeah, go ahead okay. and roll the damage from those hits. How many hits did Super, you have? I missed twice. Okay. And the damage from the one hit is ten. All right, so that arm is in very bad shape. Let's see, that is Tara's turn. You know what? We're going to put this in proper initiative now because things are going to have to be different, I think. Although this is going to be very difficult because you're on two different maps. <laughs> How am I going to make this work? I mean, my plan is to for everybody to go back to our ship. Mm-hmm, same. Uh, whether or not that happens is up for debate. Okay. Like have Garlos and Ensna climb back and Coral too. And Coral. As Coral's not on the eagle. And Aster? I was about to I was about to drink. I'm gonna drink potion of flying. Let's deal with Gaston and Mama Sass on this eagle. You're gonna attack one of these legs. Yes. How long does that darkness last, Chris? It's I think it's a minute. It is ten minutes. Ooh. Ten minutes, jeez. Wow. 
So that is, let's see, you're flying around, you've drunk your potion, and you're flying, mm-hmm. that's all you can do this round. Yep. And Mama Sass, you want to make attacks on this arm? Yes, please. Make your attack rolls. Papa Gaston, go ahead and do yours too. <laughs> Gaston can't reach. Uh, that's two 19s. Okay, that's okay. two hits. We'll call this arm four. That was a garbage roll. That's 12 damage. Okay, Papa Gaston. What's the what's the two hit? He rolled twelve. Nineteen. <laughs> okay, Gaston's arm is too short. He's like, oh, let's go. fly closer. You try to hack at this thing; it's not working. The eagle can attack. Can I have the eagle attack it as well? It's probably not going to hit. You can try. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to say probably just the beak, because otherwise the the if he, if the talons the others wouldn't be able to reach. So probably just the beak. Okay, sure. Sounds reasonable. Unless you say that I can. You need to be a better munchkin, Jessica. We need every little bit. Per the rules of the game, they can all attack. 20. 20 is a hit. And miss. What's the damage? So, uh, nine damage with the beak. So this eagle is pecking at this leg. Um, I guess they need to climb back over, so they're going to make an athletics check uh, with advantage. Oh, right. dear. Okay, we'll deal with that in a moment. <clears throat> I'm going to have to try and help somebody. Coral made it with a 22. Okay, well, I rolled a six and a five and a six and a five. <gasps> what? For Anzna no. and Gerlos. That means Gerlos makes it, but Anzna begins falling. Can I try to grab her before she falls? I'll let her make a dexterity saving throw first, which she fails. Yeah, make a dexterity check. See if you can grab her. I have such high dex. Oh, oh that's a 15. Okay. We'll say that you're able to grab her, and you might be able to hold on to her. We'll see what happens next round. Okay. Oh, man. Uh, you're all very busy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if anybody notice. Nobody notices. Zartok, what are you doing? <laughs> He's looking out at this madness. <laughs> Zartok, make a perception check. Shaking his, shaking his head. All right. Perception. How does one perceive? Why does he suck at perception so bad? Fifteen. Fifteen. It's not bad. That's not a terrible. Roll. Decent roll. I have a passive sixteen and Coral has Yeah, a you see three. that there are now, climbing up to the deck of the ship, the top of their ship, there are now two Neogi and that weird Umber Hulk. Oh, so that now they're, they've reversed? Yeah, they're climbing back up. Okay, that's fine. Next round. Tara, make your attacks on that arm. Okay. Are we going now in turn order? Uh, I'll tell you what we're going to do, actually. Let's go to this map. I can get off of that map. I'm going to go ahead and put some things over here. So let's put... I'm just going to put them on the edge of the map, just so I have them somewhere. I feel like we were doing pretty good with loosey-goosey mode. That'll make some people go crazy, though. They're like, ah, whose turn is it? Well, initiative order is going to start mattering here in a little bit. Okay. I don't like to hear that. You've all just climbed on board, or at least you have almost climbed on board, so I'll put Anzna sort of in between. And Garlos has made it across. Mama Sass is flying around. I'm going to put her and Papa Gasson just sort of out of the middle of nowhere with this eagle. Oh, my gosh. Who else do I need to put on here? Zartok is there. Coral, somewhere Coral near Ansna. Is next to Ansna. Aster's flying. That's right. Aster is flying. I'm going to go ahead and roll for everybody's initiative, just in the interest of time, okay? Cool. Mama Sass gets advantage, so can I go ahead and... Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Go ahead and roll hers. Well, it was bad, so... And then we have to add our modifiers, right? It does that for us. Yeah, I've got modifiers built in for all your sheets here. 13 for Mama Sass. Mama Sass, 13. I feel like I should have just taken that 20 and ignored the... Uh, advantage, but here we are. <laughs> I also got a 13 if I'm looking at this crap. Carlos a 20. <laughs> okay, and Papa Gaston, you get to go first. Gaston's on an eagle flying over? Yep, the only thing within range of you right now is this arm of this ship. Okay. He, he I guess he'll swing at it, right? I mean, he can he can do damage to it. Mm, oh, he actually Maybe. hit it, 25. Oh. But he doesn't get sneak attack, right? Right. Uh, five damage. That's not enough to exceed the ship's damage threshold. Okay. <laughs> Let me look at the roll, too. Uh, that was a... Oh, no, it went away. That was a one. Oh, that was a one. All right, so he'll try again later. Okay. 
Uh, actually, I don't think it's possible, Josh, because the most you can roll is an eight. What's the damage threshold? Ten. <laughs> oh my god, okay, that Gaston will probably stop realizing <laughs> that he probably can't do anything. And he'll just, he'll just kind of whisper him so, to himself like, this is so awesome. We are so cool. All right, Garlos. <laughs> uh, Garlos sees that these creatures are going to climb over. He doesn't have any ranged weapons except his spear, which he needs as a melee weapon. So he will simply move over a bit, ready in action if anything comes within range. They're not going to make it this turn, right? Because they've got to climb to the top of their ship and then make it across. They climbed last round. This round, they'll be spending their round climbing over. They won't get there this round, but they'll get real close. Okay. And the eagle. Is the eagle going anywhere? The eagle's going to attack. Okay. The eagle attacks the arm. We don't know anything's going on at the moment. That's a 22 to hit. That's a hit. And that is nine damage. All right. That is, again, not enough to exceed the damage threshold. And the eagle can't do it <laughs> I should have been checking that earlier, but I forgot about that. Oh, well. Yeah, now I'm confused. So there's the damage threshold means how much damage they have to inflict to even do damage? Yeah, yes. and, uh, ships have damage thresholds, which means you have to exceed a certain amount of damage to even do anything. Tara, it's your turn. So Tara does see that, that things are climbing over, uh, but she's already been hacking at this, so she's going to... Yeah. Fight, you know, or hit the thing, and then she's going to head over to uh, stand beside Gerlos and attack the people when ready. But okay, question about damage threshold, because Terra has multiple hits, so does each hit need to... Each hit needs to exceed the damage threshold, that's Just right. Sure but it, that, it separately. that's relatively easy for Terra to do, though. Yes, and I rolled it earlier um, before we did the initial stuff, so I have two hits and one miss. All right, what's the damage on each individual hit? Right, rolling that. Oh, uh, we did pretty good. So uh, one is a 16 and the other is a 14. The 16 takes out that that arm altogether. Nice. Nice. So that's two down. Yep, that's two down. And this one again creaks loudly, slams into the deck, bounces off, and falls to the ground below. And it does uh, two points of damage to your ship as it slams into it and then goes falling off. Of course, again, two points of damage below your damage threshold, right? So the last yeah. two that didn't yeah, do anything. Yeah, the last one they yep. hit also didn't do any damage. Oh, I didn't know anything about the damage threshold. Your damage threshold is also 10, I think, right? Uh, yes, it is. And that's Tara's turn. Tara, where are you moving? Uh, she is... Oh, I'll move her if I can. Hold on. Okay, one, two. Okay, Tara moves. She moves 30 feet. She moves a bit closer to Gerlos, and that means it is now Aster's turn. Aster, you're flying around. No, well, I see Esna falling. Can I go to her? Yep, she's about to fall. You can go over and help her if you want. Yeah, I'll use my action to grab onto her to help her climb. Okay, you can pretty much just lift her onto the ship if you want to. Yeah, I would like to do that. So you and her, you and uh, you land on the ship. This is by far the most, like, romantic heroic thing Aster has done. He's just like holding her. <laughs> yeah, you lift her up. She says, oh, goodness. As you lift her up, she doesn't see you coming. And you lift her onto the ship. Superman and Lois. That's what that was. This is now my new OTP. <laughs> do you want to do anything else? Do you want any other movement? So that wasn't my action? That is uh, lifting someone up else up and carrying them. I'm going to call that an action, but you still have some movement left. Yeah, I, I, I think so. I had to look up OTP. <laughs> <laughs> one time password that's a really good password Ashley <laughs> one true pairing oh I like it alright turns over for me okay great so Aster has moved a little bit further down the deck these creatures are coming closer oh he's gonna he's gonna be in darkness right where where do I where in this cause you have it in a weird yeah so unfortunately cause I don't have the two ships side by side uh, so this creature climbs out a bit onto the rope outside the darkness, getting a bit closer, and then casts a spell. No! Oh, wait. Okay. That's not good. Let's have Zartok do a thing. Is he able to seek? Canaanigans. You're going to Counterspell. Uh, counterspell? Okay. Sure. Let, uh, let me make sure I've selected my, the correct spell. Third level. N you do not block the spell. He gets to roll. I get... I oh, you get to roll? Roll. Oh, that's yes. right. You're right. Okay, you have DC to roll. DC 10 plus the spell level. 10 plus the spell. DC 10 plus. So this is a 
You're use, adding your uh, spell casting ability modifier and your proficiency bonus, right? I don't know. I'm reading it right now. Basically, your attack bonus. No, no. 10 plus your spell level. Plus that's the DC. That's the, the DC. DC. But what is he rolling? Ability check plus your spell casting ability. Yeah, so D20 plus his, uh, his ability modifier and his proficiency bonus. I'll tell you what DC you need to beat. Well, actually, no. You roll. Oh, I can tell you now, I guess. It doesn't matter. The DC you need to beat is 17. Ooh, that's a 7th <laughs> nice. level stuff. spell. So that's 16 on the die plus oh, 3 plus 4. All so. right, you successfully counterspelled a 7th level spell. Nice. Wow. That's how what we do that? it. God bless you, Josh. <laughs> oh I would really God. like to know what was going to happen. You can make an arcana check if you want to see if you can figure out what spell that might have been. I don't think that there's any chance that Tara could do that, but sure, let's do it for fun. Oh, okay. Okay. Well done, Lana. Oh, and then she has a minus two, so it's a 16. <laughs> 16, you don't know. Uh, Zarta got a 22. 22? Yeah. That was Finger of Death. Ooh. Oh, oh my cool. God. What the heck is that? That sounds really mean. That it's is bad news. Bad. If you're under 100 no. HP, no, that's you you're die. thinking power. No, that's power. Oh, kill. that's power kill. I. It's still not good. What still is it? Good. Just a ton of damage. Finger of death. Like if you reach zero, then you're dead. Dead, right? Or no, that's disintegrate. Oh, that thing's power. This is a powerful creature. What's going on? Okay, and that's that creature's turn. It has nothing else it can do. Mama Sass, you want to hack at this arm? Oh uh, yeah, I'm gonna hack at that arm. I don't know anything's happening hack out there. Hack that arm. <laughs> this is what you wanted us to go down into the hall for. Are you crazy? <laughs> uh, one hits, and that is eight. Oh wait, are you attacking damage. the? You're attacking the arm. Yep. Mama Sass says. Okay. Uh, after you're done attacking the arm, Gaston says, "Mama says, let us go back and help them." We don't know anything's happening. We can't see this. We're under the ship. Oh, we can. We have spider senses. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's communicated anything with us yet. Okay. You do sense a giant spider. I will grant that. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Every time shove, this thing's fine up there. So how much damage was that? Did you say eight? Eight. So it's under the threshold. Yeah. Dang it. Okay. The Umber Hulk. It clambers closer. Is this one weird like the one we found in the witches, the water witch temple? It's weird in a different way. Okay. <laughs> Of course. All right. Its movement is 30 feet, so it's able to get across, but only barely. I would describe them all as weird. I need to know, where is the darkness placed with respect to The darkness to these is creatures? like, uh, let's see here. Because I put it on the arms that they need to use to cross. You told me you put it at the head of the ship. No, no, right? no. Right? Which is where the, the arms connect. Chris, you told me you put it at the front of the ship, which is where the arms connect, but yes. you can't cover the entire arms. They're huge. No, no, not the entire arms, just, yeah, where they, so that they would pass through. Okay, yeah, they can climb through darkness, that's fine. Okay. They're using the same thing that we passed over, Yeah, so. I mean, they're doing the same thing you did. I feel like you're thinking that the darkness is more powerful than it actually is. I just don't know where the darkness is I'll situated. I'll draw it on the map here, but it's not going to be very helpful because it's because it's only a two-dimensional map. Uh, let me see if I can draw something to sort of indicate. Is 20-foot radius or 15-foot radius? 15-foot radius. Okay, so it's more like... Here, I don't know, a little over a little bit, like something like that, okay? Because the front of the ship is right up next to near the front of your ship, and then uh, the ram pokes out of it into the side of your ship, and then there are big arms coming out of it, wrapping around your ship. Anyone inside their ship, inside the the front of their ship, can't see what's going on outside. Gotcha. And so well, they're climb, they're climbing around, like on the grappling hook. How are yeah, they they're, getting onto they're, the ship? they're climbing on the arm and using that grappling rope that you put up there, just like you did. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. That's why the other one could see when it cast its spell. Yeah. Because that's what I wanted to know. I wanted to know how is he casting a spell that he Yeah, it's see. only a 15-foot radius, right? I mean, that's not big enough to... Uh, you can walk around that and see around it. That is the Umber Hulk's turn. It is now, at the end of its movement, it is within range. It can't do its weird eye thing. That only works if you start your turn with next to it but it can do its attacks. So this weird Umber Hulk, there is something wrong with this thing. It's smaller than a normal one. It looks kind of like it's collapsed in on itself. It's, its shell, its exoskeleton is dented and its eyes, although they're still weird and disorienting, they look kind of dull and empty and it's moving in a weird herky-jerky manner. And it starts out with claw attacks. It's gonna start out attacking Garlos, who is actually, no, 
Garlos has a ready to action. Yeah, he does. I forgot. Garlos makes an attack. And actually, if you get multi, if you have more than one attack, if you have extra attack, can you use them all on your ready to action? You said that you could not. I believe it is no. A few episodes ago, we did it. But then I think you ha- you made an you said that to correct us we couldn't do that. Yeah, Tara Tara had done it, and yeah. you said that she shouldn't have been able to do it. I think it. after looking it up later, there seems to be a lot of disagreement on it, and I think Jeremy Crawford said you can. So, I think Ashley I think Ashley did it right. Cool. I don't know. I, what do you want to do? Do you want to should Carlos make a one attack or I two mean, attacks? If, yeah, you, 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 you make the call. You're the DM. If it's a ready to action and the action is attack and your attack is multiple attacks, then it makes sense to me. Okay, we'll do multi attack then. When it benefits us, we okay. get more attacks. Oh, I see. That's that that actually sense. our house rule. I don't know <laughs> if you realize. Rule. <laughs> okay, that makes a lot of sense. DM's note. This is not correct. Extra attack, or if it's a monster, multi-attack, can only be used on the player or monster's turn. Extra attack and multi-attack cannot be used as part of a ready action or as part of an opportunity attack because those are reactions and they don't occur on the player's turn. So this ruling was a mistake. The first attack is a hit with his spear. The second attack is a miss. And he does three points of damage. Have all of our people cross the rope? Uh, Coral is about to get over. She's almost there. She is right next to the edge of the ship. So she is going to make it this round with no trouble. All right. So Gerlos hits it, stabs it as it tries to climb on board the ship, and it's making attacks. It's going to attack him twice with a claw. <clears throat> That's a... 20-something to hit. That's a hit. Another 20-something to hit. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so I'm just going to roll this with the computer. Okay, that is 25 points of damage to Gerlos. Gerlos says, Oh, that hurt more than I expected. Then it's going to try to bite at Coral. Oh, and that's almost certainly a miss. That was embarrassingly bad. Oh, just awful. A 13. Miss. Okay, yeah, just terrible. You can see it reaches out toward you with its weird mouth, its jaw sort of hanging at a strange angle. Its teeth are dripping something. It's really unpleasant looking. I really wanted it to be a critical fail where he bit his tongue. Oh, that would have been cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It, he just rolled a three. Okay, Zartok, what do you want to do? Does Zartok have to make a wisdom saving throw for being within 30 feet of the weird monster at the are service Are you within turn? 30? Let's if see. If you're you, looking at the monster. You are, yes. Is he down too low to if see it? If you choose to look at the monster. Oh, no, I don't want to look at the monster. Is it that easy to avoid this check? <laughs> you will have use... disadvantage against uh, on attacks against at least that one. Maybe the others as well. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, if um, you avert your eyes so that you can't see the Umber Hulk... Yeah, I would say you have disadvantage on anybody you're attacking in that direction. Okay, gotcha. Zartok will not look at the crazy creature. Okay. Because he doesn't want to. Yeah. He will cast... These things, this this Yogi look like they have eyes, right? They, sure, yeah. Yeah, definitely. He will cast Blindness Deafness at the one that boarded the ship at a second level. Okay. it's not, They haven't boarded yet. They're on the way. Oh, okay. But he needs to be within 30 feet. On the map, he's 30 feet away, but I don't know if that's a... Yeah, let's say he's on, he's where he is. The other one is farther okay. away still. So that's a constitution save of 16. Okay, hold on. Let me check to see what his bonus is. And Zartok will also move towards the back of the ship. Cause... <laughs> oh, wow. They have spider climb. They can easily climb over there. That is a failure. Nice. He is blinded. Okay. For one minute. And I'll keep track if you want me to. Now, did they roll again at the end of each turn? Yes, they do. All right. And Zartok, anything else? Zartok moved towards the back. Great. Zartok moves a bit farther away. Like a coward. The other Neogi quickly, with very little effort, runs up the (laughs) side of the ship, climbs up onto the deck, and then... Yeah, Terra's close enough. Terra, make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, no. Is he casting a spell? Why would you do this to me? Why me? Uh, I don't know. I could do Zartok, maybe. 24. Wow. Nice. Nice. No effect. You feel this creature reaching into your mind, 
and you fight it off. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh, cool. A Ashley, did Tara take the ability so that she gets her proficiency bonus on wisdom saving throws? Yeah, I think it was a feat that she got when she wanted more. That was an awesome decision. That was a smart, everyone looks at Tara and goes, oh, decision. she's a fighter. I'm going to use my wisdom yes. right. saving throw spells. And then it doesn't work. Yeah, ah. it resilient wisdom. Yeah, that's what she got. What do you want to do, Coral? Coral's very carefully avoiding looking at the Umber Hulk. Okay. And it's going, oh, I can you move me on the ship? I can't get over Oh, yeah, the wall. yeah, I'm sorry. There's yeah, a wall there. Right. I'm yeah. sorry. No, that's, that's all right. Stupid Thank of me. Thank you. That will trigger an attack of opportunity. Yep. Uh, 14. Misses. Wow, I'm rolling terrible. So the Umber Hulk swings at the air that Coral just left in its weird, awkward manner. Before I moved away, I'm going to say that I uh, looked at the Umber Hulk and uh, blew green powder in its face. I need a con save, DC 16. It says poison spray. Okay, you did look at it? I don't have to look. Oh, you don't have to make a check. Yeah, okay. this is because this so is a con save. So you're sort of doing save. this without looking because it revolves, yes. involves a con save. I see. Yes. You didn't look at it. Yes. Failed. This is my way of getting around that. Yes. Uh, 19 poison damage. So you blow this poison right in its face with your eyes closed, direct hit, and it does nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Okay. The creature, as you watch, I guess, I don't know, you're not looking. I'm not looking. But, but for anyone who is looking, the poison in the air just seems to dance around its face and it doesn't even breathe it in. It's not even breathing. Cool. As she's running, uh, she calls for the eagle to get up here. Okay. Ansna. Ansna is quite worried. She will step up next to Garlos. Oh, no, she needs to make a save. Well, I guess she's not going to look. She's not going to look. She's going to step up next to Gerlos and step there so she's not directly looking. She doesn't have to look in the direction of the Umber Hulk, and she's going to try to attack the Neogi. That is a miss. I think it's the one attack. And Papa Gaston. Now, your eagle hasn't moved yet. Nope. Coral is calling for it to return, although I don't know if that's telepathic or not. I assume she actually just yelled for it, but I, I don't... So do you want to hold your action ready in action, or do you want to attack this thing while you're flying by? Attack this arm. Uh, no, Gaston will ready his... Act. I guess he can't change an initiative order in 5th edition. No, he no. will ready in action to jump onto the ship Great. when they get there. Okay. And Garlos. Garlos, he is looking right at this thing. He needs to make a wisdom saving <laughs> throw. Holy cow, did he make it? Garlos has been the hero this whole time. No, he did not make it. Never mind. I'll take that back. He is confused. I need a D10. A one. Careless just stands there and says, What was I doing? Where are we? And the eagle flies up onto the ship. Where do you want them to land, Jessica? Uh, there is fine. Oh, okay. I mean, I could put them closer or farther away, whatever you like. No, let's go with there. They land there. I'll move the eagle away just a little bit so it's easy for them to move their characters. They land toward the back of the ship near Zartok. Tara, it's your turn. Are both of them Neogi now on the ship, or is there still one on the rope? Uh, one is on the rope, and uh, it hasn't had its chance to finish moving yet. It's, it's going to make its, it's going to make its movement onto the ship this turn. Great. Uh, how many hits do you think it would take to cut a rope? Oh, let's see. Uh, probably just one. You should be able to cut it quite easily. Great. So that's what Tara's going to try and do: is run up and. Take this to it. Now, to let play. me warn you before you use your action for that. They are climbing across the arms using the rope, and they have spider climb. They basically can't fall. All right, so you you might want to use your action for something else. But if a rope is cut and the rope falls, they don't get on the ship. Oh, they're still going to climb over on a different gonna, method. Exactly. Basically. Okay, that's fair. I don't want you to waste your action. I appreciate it. It would have been really cool. Had they fallen, but I guess yeah. that thank you for making it not be a really uncool thing. Yeah, that would be just frustrating, it would I think. would be so sad. Tara positioned herself horribly for what she should do, which is combat at distance. Uh -huh. But uh, let's see, how brave is she? You know, I'm going to say in that in that southern Neogi's current position, you could attack it at range if you wanted. You need to probably get up onto the upper deck. Yeah, I agree. I agree I should get up on the upper deck either way or, or go 
across to the way, but you know, everyone else has been really brave, so Tara's going to be really brave and go attack the Niyogi. Okay. Also, it did try to like Great. make her uh, mind slave, and that's not cool. Yes, it's true. <laughs> okay, uh, three attacks. Do you want to tell me the DC, or do you want me to read out a bunch of numbers? Uh, go ahead and read those numbers. Okay. First hit is a 28. That's a hit. The second one is a 21. That's a hit. And the other one is the 26. That's a hit. Okay. Three hits. Does he have a damage threshold too, or? I get to, no. <laughs> I'm just uh, 15, and then uh, 14, and then another 15. So 44 points of damage. Nice. Wow. Okay. That's how the glass guardians do it. So it's solid bravery over there. Please tell me he looks horribly damaged. He's definitely... Yeah, he looks just incredibly badly injured. You have come up and just slashed at him. Uh, yeah, the devastating attacks. Very impressive. Yeah. Aster, what do you want to do? I have a question. Okay. When it happens with the, with the one over there in the corner that's on the rope and on the side of the arm, if I were to say a command like fall... But he... If it fails its wisdom saving throw, I guess it would let go and fall. That would harm him, though. He can't. I don't. I don't think it can do it. it oh, you're it's, right. It that can't would. That's right. Be harmful. That would be obviously is that harmful. What it is? Yeah. Okay. But I could halt it. Well, let's see if I can kill this. The one that Terra's been beating. You could tell him to play patty cake with the rope. <laughs> no, I can't. That's suggestion. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is just command. This is my cleric thing. Oh, gotcha. Cool. Okay, so I'm gonna move myself. Just trying to keep the brand consistent, you know. Brand manager came in and was like, wait a minute. So 25 feet. So Aster flies over this combat that's taking place near the front of the ship and lands behind the Niyogi. I'm going to try to stab it twice. 16? What happened to our rolling pocket dimension? We don't have to do that anymore? No, not since he moved rooms. <laughs> okay, yeah, so now he doesn't have to disappear anymore. 16 to hit is a miss. Okay, and second attack. Soft 20? That's a hit. All oh, right. It's 12 damage. 12 damage. Aster takes out this Neogi. Heck yeah. Ooh, nice. I helped. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I stabbed it through its face. And yeah, then... so this weird eel-like face swings towards you as you fly over and land, and Aster just stabs right through it. Can I still move? Well, let's see. What's your movement when you're flying? It's my movement of my... I move 25 feet, I think. Yeah, you can move five more feet then. No, I can move 15 because I'm... I oh, because of your mobility, right? Yeah. Right. I'll fly under the wing. Okay, you fly under the wing. Cool. Red the bell, but the hell of combat. The Niyogi gets to go. It's going to climb along that arm. It's going to stay where it is. It's just grabbing onto this arm, and it's going to cast a different spell. Oh, counter spell. <laughs> third level counter spell. Out of third level spells. Fireball. <laughs> uh, all right. You make your check. It's a DC 15. Oh, yeah. So I got an 11 plus a 4 plus a 3. So 18 total. 18. Okay. It doesn't work. God bless your counter spell. Mama Sass, what do you want to do? What was it? What was it? Oh, did you want to check and see what it was? I'll roll an arcana check to... 12. <laughs> 27. Negative energy flood. I don't know Whoa. what any of these spells are. Oh, I don't know what that does. I don't even know what that, that is. That sounds bad. Yeah, what, I know the finger of death, but what is that? That's interesting. Mama Sass, what do you want to do? Ooh, is Mama Sass out of the 30 feet? I think she is. She is. She is. Uh, Mama Sass is going to charge in. Okay, she doesn't have to roll anything because she started out beyond 30 feet from the Ember Hulk, but she had to use her movement and dash to get there, or did she have Ew, more? She's, she's got, got 40, 40 feet, feet of movement. All right, she got there in one move, and now she's right next to the Ember Hulk as it's clamoring on board. Taking her axe and smashing against that Ember Hulk. Maybe 13 and 18. Oh, they're both misses. Okay. Mm. Okay. The Umber Hulk. Oh. I'm going to start with a bite. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start with a bite on poor Garlos. No! Can I post disadvantage? Yeah, you can do that. Uh, let's see. Well, that's a 26 with the first attack. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so I rolled a natural 20, so you turned the natural 20 into a 26. Oh, boy. So. Well, that's that, better. That's much better. He tries to bite Carolos, or it tries to bite, you know, he is not the right choice of words there. I gotta roll the damage. Carolos goes down. Oh no. And 
must make a constitution saving throw. Oh, wait. That means he just suffers extra damage. Okay, so... Oh, no. Okay. So this creature bites Gerlos. Gerlos cries out in pain. Ooh. And then he goes limp. What? And you see the color drain from his body as this creature clamps onto him. Oh, and no. And he drops lifelessly to the ground. And the Umber Hulk stands up just a little bit straighter. And I need to roll some damage here that it gets back. I'm confused. Oh, that was absolutely garbage. Garbage, garbage roll. Oh my gosh. On 3d6, I rolled four. Okay. All right, so the Umber Hulk gets a tiny, tiny bit of hit points back. Great. Wait, why? Why he attacked once and he went down? Did he continue attacking? Is that what happened? No, uh, he when he made a successful attack, Carlos had to make a saving throw versus an effect and failed, took additional damage, and died. And uh, Garlos's <laughs> corpse is laying there on the deck. Died, died, or unconscious? Died. Died, died. Oh, he got life drained. And now the creature attacks uh, Mama's ass with the uh, claws. We have a 24 and a natural 20. Um, I'm going to use Silvery Barbs as a Ooh. reaction on the nat 20. So they have disadvantage on that attack, and I will have advantage. Uh, no, I'm going to give it to Tara. Tara will have advantage on her next attack. That turned that natural 20 into a 13. 13 misses. Uh, but the 24 still hits. Yes, it does. All right, hold on. Uh, damage is... 26 points of damage. Mama Sass goes down. Ooh. Okay. Mama Sass is down. Gerlos is dead. So he failed a death saving throw? Or is this just no, an effect No, this is magic? an effect that the creature has. Oh, he has like a death blowing blow It effect? has a life drain effect. And if you're reduced to zero by the life drain effect, or if you're at zero and then affected by life drain, you die. Oh, my God. Don't blame him. Gerlos, no. Finally, that's the end of the Umber Hulk's turn. Zartok, you've just seen two crew members go down. What do you want to do? Yeah, that's not good. Huh. I'm emotionally affected by this. <laughs> Zartok is not emotionally affected. Josh is not doing good. You got two bad things happening. Bad spiders joining up. That monster seems to be able to kill everyone. And you're out of range of its eyes, so you can actually target it with spells. Good. Let me look at this spell real quick. It would suck if this doesn't work, but he's going to do something, because that thing's rough. So Zartok holds up the Staff of Power. He hasn't used it yet. And he triggers it, and it's awesome looking. What? Let's. How does it look when it gets used? We'll say, like, stuff's coming out of the top. Like, magic symbols and stuff. And he casts Hold Monster on the Ooh. thing. And so it needs to make a wisdom saving throw of 16 or be held. Zartok, you cast Hold Monster on this weird Umber Hulk. And I'm not even going to roll a saving throw. Nothing happens. And as a big clue to why nothing happens, there's an important bit of text in the spell description that says that it doesn't affect certain types of monsters. And that means, uh, Zartok, is there anything else you want to do with your turn? Yeah, I do. First, I'm going to do some Doctor Strange stuff, because now there's an alternate timeline. Uh oh Because this almost really happened. <laughs> so, Zartok casts Hold Monster. The Umber Hulk starts killing everybody. The other weird monster takes over Gaston's brain. And the Umber Hulk and Gaston the Assassin are killing the whole party. And it ends with Zartok's backed up against the corner of the ship and Gaston's like licking his lips about to stab him. And then uh, Zartok looks down at his little uh, hourglass tattoo and he's got to overclock that bad boy. So he like powers it up, super, super time. And then time's reversing. And then the thing shatters. And then he's back at his original turn. And uh, the tattoo is like a broken hourglass and it's like smoking off of his arm now. And he's like, he's like, all right, that was bad. Well, that thing's undead if you didn't figure it out. There were plenty of clues. I'm sorry. And instead, Zartok's going to... So he reverse time. He gets the charges back into a staff of power. He saw glimpses of the future, which didn't look great. And so he's going to attempt to trap the 
Umber Hulk thing in a. The spell is called Wall of Force, ah. which you can use. And I'm gonna. I'm just gonna straight up read the spell description because last time I didn't, we missed some critical. A one critical sentence, and that made Mike have to do a bunch of work, which makes me feel bad. So <laughs> I'm just gonna read it, and Mike can take it out. So the spell reads. An invisible wall of force springs into existence at a point you choose within range. The wall appears in any orientation you choose as a horizontal or vertical barrier or at an angle. It can be free floating or resting on a solid surface. You can form it into a hemispherical dome, which is what Zartok's going to do. Um, Wait. Or a sphere with a radius of up to 10 feet, or it can shape a flat surface made of, of up to 10 foot but 10 foot panels. Each panel must be contiguous with another panel. We're not doing any of that. Uh, it lasts for the duration if the wall and the duration is concentration up to 10 minutes uh, if the wall cuts through a creature's space when it appears the creature is pushed to one side of the wall your choice for side nothing can physically pass through the wall it is immune to all damage and can't be dispelled by dispel magic a disintegrate spell destroys the wall instantly however the wall also extends into the ethereal plane blocking ethereal travel through the wall wow so Zartok you wave your staff at wi- who, who are you trapping in this now thing? I'm or- literally winded after reading that. I need to <laughs> exercise. <laughs> I am trapping the Umber Hulk, so a magical wall of force like a boom, goes over the over the Umber Hulk as if it's like a force field. I'm force fielding the Umber Hulk into a thing so we can concentrate on the other creature, so- the other Neogi that is currently. So you climbing were able up. to use that after using the previous spell? Zartok has the tattoo which allows him to reverse time. For one turn oh. and to get us kind of get his turn back so he's using that ability now because his whole monster spell didn't work that's amazing it's so cool are you doing dome or sphere i uh, i would do sphere if i could but i think since he's on the wing of the spell jammer i would have to do a dome i mean i right? feel like the sphere would just fit under him but that's up to Mike. If it's if, it, if the sphere fits, I think you can do a sphere. I might say maybe you take a little piece of the wing out. <gasps> we'll fix that later. It's we'll good. fix it later. It's right, fine. Guys. It's fine. We'll fix it. <laughs> sure. But it turns out that piece of the wing was crucial, and your ship is now ruined. <laughs> and now we're crashing to the earth. No, that, that's fine. Yeah, that you've you've trapped it in a little dome, uh, along with a piece of the wing, uh, but but that's fine. And the Niyogi sees what you've done and hisses angrily at you. Doesn't seem real happy with that choice of action. Is there anything else Zartok wants to do? No, I think I've taken up my fair share of this podcast. I'm, I'm done now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that means it is Coral's turn. Coral is still uh, on her eagle just off the side of the ship. She was going to line up a thorn whip. At the moment, you can't whip this creature because it's encased in a wall of force. Can I not whip the sphere, which is 10 feet at max, therefore not a large item, and a thorn whip can do large or smaller? It does specify creature. If the spell description says you target a creature, then I don't think you can target the wall of Force. Okay. Also, it's immune to all damage. Oh, I wasn't worried about damage. I know, you want to move it. Yep. But I don't think that will work. Okay. If you wanted to fly up and maybe try pushing it. No, no, I'm good. Uh, okay, so Coral is uh, seeing both Mom Sass and Garlos go down, but realizing, you know, Garlos isn't moving. Uh, it's going to cast a healing word at level two on Mama Sass. Rolling terribly and giving her seven hp all right mama sass is back up the second i'm adding hp okay uh and i am sorry my plans got changed so now i have to think of stuff to do you can still whip the niyogi off of the thing i could is the niyogi like i vaguely recall like it, its position maybe slightly off versus what we're seeing on the map you can you can use its position on the map that's fine okay. it's 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 keeping a distance from all of you uh, it is uh, it climbed over partway on one of the arms and then got onto the wing and just treat its current position as being where it is that's fine okay and can uh, 
I don't remember how we were doing this last time. Is the eagle moving on my turn or? Yes. Cool. Yes. Okay. Eagle's moving on your turn. And it has a ton of movement. I don't remember what it is. I'll look it up in a minute. But I, I'm going to fly it uh, a, a little further away from the ship uh, to get a line on the Neogi, which is 30 feet away. And I am going to cast a uh, Thorn Whip. Okay. Um. Uh, so I started within 30 feet of the Umber Hulk. Uh, I am not looking at the Umber Hulk. Okay. Does its ability affect attacks on other creatures, or is it just on the Umber Hulk? Just on the Umber Hulk. Okay, cool. So I'm going yeah, to... Yeah, you, you need to start your round within 30 feet and not averting your gaze, right, to try uh, to, to be affected. If you're going to attack something else, then it's not a problem. Okay, cool. Sorry, question. With the uh, wall force thing, are we even able to see it? Yes. Okay. You can see it's transparent. Okay. I'm going to thorn whip the Neogi. That's probably not going to do it. 17 to hit. 17 is a miss. Okay. The Neogi ducks out of the way and hisses at you. Coral smiles kind of nervously. <laughs> <laughs> it's the end of my turn. <laughs> okay. Anzna. Anzna can't really do anything. She is out of spells and she can't attack the Umber Hulk. She is going to... Does she have a ranged weapon? Hold on. Maybe she has a ranged weapon. No ranged weapon. Um, oh, wait. Does she have a cantrip of some kind? Yeah, she can cast Sacred Flame. She'll cast Sacred Flame. What's the range on Sacred Flame? 60 feet of range. She is within range of hitting this Neogi, so she's going to cast Sacred Flame. A 17 is a miss for her, too. So she points her finger at this Neogi, and a flame descends from the sky, but the Neogi again jumps out of the way. <gasps> All right, and that is Anzna's turn. She can't really do anything else. Papa Gaston, what do you want to do? Is Mama Sass conscious? She's she, awake yes. now. She's yeah. good. Papa Gaston's going to put his, kind of poke the wall of force. Like, okay. That's, you can't attack through that. Um, he doesn't want to run out onto the wing and fight the Neogi himself. That's not a very Papa Gaston thing to do. So maybe Gaston will try to hide behind the barricade stealth. Okay. And when it comes up, maybe he can... Oh my gosh, he rolled a 1. 12. Oh. All right. Um, it's not so starting Pop, well for us. Uh, so yeah, Papa Gaston's going to duck behind the thing, kind of try to... He thinks he's he thinks he's stealthing extremely well, and he kind of parks himself in the corner waiting for to ambush something. Okay. Tara, what do you want to do? Tara, like, breathes a sigh of relief when she sees that uh, Mama Sass is regaining consciousness. That's good. She's happy. She's actually underneath yep. you. And, You're standing and, yeah, over so her. Yeah, she's, so she's very... <laughs> she's happy. And she's going to not stand over her anymore. She's going to uh, <laughs> walk around. And she is going to take some shots at the Neogi with her short bow because she's not like climbing out on the wing like a crazy person. All right. Now, I think you had your sword out. Are you, dr or not your sword, your war pick? Are you dropping the war um, pick? No, I don't want to drop the war pick. Well, I guess I could. No. I feel like the Neogi's a bad guy. I don't want to drop the war pick. I would like to. I don't know. Can hold an action. I guess, like, yeah, but then, you know, Mike only lets me hit once when I, I do that. It's so mean. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I would, I would Sorry. have to do what? I would have to uh, chief my war pick. You get one interact. Yeah, but then, and then you could use your action to pull out your bow, but then you couldn't yeah, use but it then, this round. Yeah, but then Yogi's going to be, like, straight up in my face, and I'm not going to want a bow. So, that's not going to be great. So I guess I'll take my measly ready to action with the war pick. Uh, Tara holding up the wall of the fence and, you know, shouts to Papa Gaston to, to go, you know, help help Mama Sass if he can. Okay. And Aster, it's now your turn. You've been flying around. You were below the level of the ship. You've been sort of uh, moving out of range of this creature's eyes so that you don't start your turn within view of it. Mm -hmm. Right? So now you're below the wing, out of view of the creature, which I guess means you don't actually know it's been encased in a wall of force? I do not. Well, no, I would because the sphere cut into the wing of the ship. Oh, that's true. You can see the sphere suddenly uh, cut through the wing. That's true. You can see that. 
So <laughs> just as a reminder, so my I let my my drum dangle because I have no nothing I can use, no spells. My guitar is there. I'll use a free action to pull out the rapier. So I have the rapier and the whip. Okay, you have an interact action to pull out your uh, extra weapon. Um, okay, great. And then, <laughs> how does this work? If I fly under and up, can I get to the Niyogi and then... Definitely. Yeah, fly gives you plenty of movement. Okay, so I'll get to the Niyogi, um, and I'll take three attacks with my action and my bonus. It couldn't see me, but it heard me, so I don't get sneak attack, right? Wait, why couldn't it see you? Because I'm under the ship. But, I mean, if you fly up above the ship, it can then see okay, you. Okay, I was going to come up from behind. But if I... you wanted to take an action to hide. I know. Dang, I need that level two. All right, so I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to go and attack. That's 17 plus eight for the whip, I think. That's a hit. And then, can I just roll all of my attacks then? Uh, if you want to, sure, that's fine. We got one whip hit. 18 plus eight for the second whip. And then my sword is a five plus seven, so I don't think that hits. That's a miss, right. So two strikes with the whip. Okay, so that is five damage on one <laughs> and seven damage on the other. Okay, so you whip at this spider and it hisses at you and ducks out of the way of your sword. Gotcha, and then I will use the remainder of my movement to dive under again. Okay, you'll be leaving its melee range. Are you okay and with I that? I don't get attacked because I have the mobile feet. Oh, you have the mobile. Oh, so, so I'm going right. to do dive-ins like an eagle. That is the Niyogi's turn. Uh, the Niyogi. Gaston has ducked down behind the railing, so even though he's not mechanically hiding, he is sort of out of view. Tara, make a wisdom saving throw. Great. It's my strong point. A counterspell! It's, it's not a spell, Josh. I want to counterspell, but I can't. It's not a spell. <laughs> All right, sorry, I forgot how to play D&D, uh, so I was trying to find out where my saving throw bonuses are. How does one D&D? Right? It's really, it's rough. We've only, we've only played 300 episodes of this. I don't know that this is a good one. When do I get to decide whether I can use Indomitable? Oh, is it before or after you know the results? That's the question. Yeah, because yeah, I, I got a 14. I'm concerned about a 14. What's your bonus? No, that was with the bonus. That's with the bonus. <laughs> oh, no, you're going to have to reroll that one if you can. Yeah. You're using your second use of Indomitable, is that right? It sounds like it, yeah. It says you can re-roll a saving throw that you fail. Oh, so you can find out. So you out. get to know nice. the results. So you get to know if okay. you failed or not. So, yes, you failed. Excellent. I will re-roll that. It's that crown. That crown's like, no, the leader doesn't do whatever. Oh, no. That's not good. That's not a good thing. It's a 15. <laughs> it's better. A 15 is also a fail. Not oh, enough. shoot. Guys. Tara has been basically dominated. No. Is there, like, is this obvious from, uh, it, like, can we tell this has happened? Not immediately, okay. but you will soon okay. be able to tell that this has happened. All you can see is the Niyogi sort of stares at Tara, and uh, Tara's posture changes, and maybe that's all you can tell. The only relevant stuff for now, Tara, is that you can't take reactions. If you take any damage, you'll get to repeat your saving throw. That's the Niyogi's action. And Tara, you hear a voice in your head that says, Kill the short one. And <laughs> Mama Sass, you're up. <sighs> uh, I know what she would do, but I also think it's a terrible idea. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, Mama Sass stands up. That's 20 feet of movement. Uh, here's a question before I go flying off. This sphere goes through the ship. Mm -hmm. Does it look like there is a way to disconnect it from the ship so it can be pushed off the ship? Gosh, I don't know. Let me let me see if there are any rulings on moving a, a wall of force. Uh, let's see. Hmm. The wall cannot move. Okay. It is immune to damage of all... Now, there are some questions about what it means for something not to move. So, for example... You're on a planet that is currently whizzing through space, right? Does that mean that its absolute reference point does not change? So as the planet moves, the, sp the sphere just gets left behind and it's very quickly just a sphere with an umber hulk in it hovering in space? I love it. I'm fine with that. Yeah. That would be hilarious, but I'm pretty sure that's not the intention of the spell. 
uh, because uh, that would mean it's pretty much an automatic death sentence whenever it's cast. Are the two ships that we're currently on moving, or are they stationary? They're not. Okay. They're stationary. That's a good yeah. effort. So I think what it means is it just sits there uh, with reference to the world and these two ships that are moving. I think if the ships were moving, I think it would get left behind. Okay. Okay. Right? Sure. I think that makes sense. Yeah, I don't know. I can't move it. Uh, you you cannot push it. Okay. I mean, if you want to take just... I, w- I want to say, if you want to take an interact action to try to just poke it a little bit to see if it moves, it does not move. Okay. Mama Sass does that like she moves. Uh, moves there, pushes it, nothing happens. Uh, so that's 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So she moves further out onto the wing, closer to the Nyogi, making terrible decisions with her life. <laughs> All right, so she's out there on the wing. She's not flying or anything. She's just running across this bit of flat surface before the wing starts to curve upward. Ashley, I'm sorry if I care if I kill her. Try not to. Uh, that's only five feet. Uh, she's gonna pull out a javelin and throw a javelin at the. All right, I hate to do it. I hate to be the picky person. But if you took an interact action to try pushing the sphere... Okay. Okay, fine. Uh, I'll hold an action to attack. Okay. Great. So you, if, the, if the creature comes within five feet, then you will yep. uh, attack it. Got it. The Umber Hulk. The Umber Hulk flails around uselessly inside this sphere. It just strikes at it. Nothing happens. Yeah. It's, it's completely helpless. We're back to Zartok. Zartok, what do you want to do? I don't know. Zartok's holding up the Staff of Power that's still glowing because the Staff of Power is uh, fueling the the sphere. He can't make concentrate actions, but he can cast regular spells. Yep. And he was thinking about how they might need to board the ship, but actually he's getting low on his spells pretty fast too. Might as well just do stuff. I don't know. Let's just fling a fireball at this thing. <laughs> Um, okay. If you feel, if you fling a fireball at this thing, you can position it so you don't hit any of your friends. Yeah. But you will do at least a little bit of damage to the wing of the ship and maybe a little bit of damage to the other ship as well. He's accepting this. Okay. Okay, that's a that's a 16 dexterity save. Okay. Let me look up with their dex bonus. Okay, got it. I rolled a 17. Oh, well, it makes it. But still, they're going to take half damage. They're going to take half of 29. All right. 14 points of damage is nothing to sneeze at. This creature looks pretty badly injured now. You see how I made Ma- Mike do that math? That was genius Please right kill there. Please kill it. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to kill Gaston. <laughs> also, I need to track that there's been some damage to the enemy ship. How much was that again? 29? Yes. And Zartok's going to move a little bit towards the back of the ship again. Uh, did you do a concentration check for Dominate Person? It's not actually Dominate Person. It's Dominate it's not a Monster, spell. isn't it? Oh, no, it's an ability. No, it's it's yeah. an ability, Then mind, sorry. And it doesn't have the concentrate uh, trait. Which is unfortunate. Monsters, they suck. Sorry. Uh, good question, though. Gotta keep me honest. Zartok, that's the end of your turn. Yep. Coral. Okay. Uh, Coral is going to uh, Thorn Whip again. All right. Uh, 21 to hit. That is a hit. Uh, that is 11 damage. Ooh. And I pull it 10 feet closer to me. Okay. Oh, oh, that puts it teetering on the very edge of the wing. Oh, boy. That's no good. And then Coral's also going to... Uh, pull out her short bow, which is a thing that I don't know that she's ever actually used, but she's going to try oh. to shoot it. Plus one to hit on this. It should go great. Wait, you can thorn whip and? Uh, action, uh, thorn whip is, wait, wait, nope, sorry. Nope, never mind, sorry. I had it backwards from last round. I did healing word, which was a bonus action. Thorn and whip was the action. Never mind. Right. That's all she does. Can't do that. Okay. All uh, right. Then that means Ansna. Asna will again attempt a Sacred Flame attack. Uh, Need to make a Dexterity saving throw. Uh, Oh, I failed. Yeah. So the uh, flame comes down from the sky uh, and does a 
A little bit of damage. Creature hisses at Anzna. Papa Gaston, what do you want to do? Papa Gaston sees it's go time. He hops over the railing of the wing. He races over to the edge next to the Nyogi, and he readies an action to attack once any of his allies come within range of it so that he can get sneak attack on it. Oh, all right. Blood Gulper's glowing. It's so thirsty for weird alien blood. <laughs> <laughs> Tara, it is your turn. You have been commanded to attack Gaston. Oh, so that's the short one, huh? Yeah. Great. Tara climbs over the wing. Yep. And uh, heads over to Gaston. Everybody's cheering her on. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> get, get him, him Tara. Get him. Get him. Oh, <laughs> So good, help help me fight it. I'm ready to stab it. I just prepared an action. Three attacks. Oh my god. Please miss. Great. How's, how's Gaston's HP, Josh? His HP is so good. Oh, yeah. That's what that tone tells me. His, his armor class, though. She gets an 18 for her first hit. Uh huh. Sweet. <laughs> That'll hit a Gaston. 30 for her next hit. Oh, <laughs> miss. No, that misses. <laughs> hey, I'm really glad we don't have the plus 10 roll in D&D. And a 16 for her next hit. Oh, the 16 misses. Wait, uh, how much damage did you do? I don't you know. I haven't time? rolled that. I don't want to do it. Uh, okay. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I was watching the previous episodes and Tara was complaining that her rolls were rolling low and she couldn't hit. Yeah. It always works yeah. out that way. <laughs> All right, so I'm rolling two D8 plus eight. For each hit? Well, no, no, just, yeah. Oh, total. Okay, got it. I wish, my God, I'd be so powerful. (laughs) They would be dead. I was thinking that's an awful lot. Okay, good news. My rolls for damage are so bad, right? Because I got a one and a three. So that's four plus the two plus eight, so 16, so 20. 20 points of damage for Gaston. Gaston, you're standing there waiting for an ally to join you. Tara comes rushing up and then slams her war pick into you. <laughs> Twice. Oh, oh, oh. What the, what the <laughs> thing? Tara. Tara's expression is just blank. I think it's we taking, can tell now. It's taking over yeah. my brains. <laughs> Aster, it's your turn. I did not see any of that. <laughs> Aster is below the wing. He doesn't know what just happened. He hurt Tara. <laughs> yeah. And what are you doing? Okay, she's doing something crazy. Uh, I'll do what I've been doing. I'll fling up. I see that Gaston, uh, Papa Gaston, is there, so I should be able to get sneak attack on these on these hits. Um, yep. And oh. then Gaston will get we... his reaction now too, yeah, right? Yeah. So I'll, I'll let. Can I let Gaston go first? Yeah. Gaston gets his ready to action. Nice. That's uh. He's rolling with disadvantage, but he still rolled a twenty-four. Nice. Wow. Ooh. Wow. That is a hit. So that's seven regular damage from the blood gulper and sixteen sneak attack damage. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. So that's a total of twenty-three damage, and Gaston will heal for half of it. Wow. Nice. That's Cause... nice. Wow. Gaston, you're on fire in these last few fights. I told you that thing. It was like wanted the so like what what color's the blood like green? Uh, no sure. Blue. Let's say it's greenish. Oh, it's green. So like the, when blood gulper like c- cuts it, you know it's normally red, and then when it cuts it and it tastes that sweet green blood, it turns green. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, That's awesome. yeah. The, so this creature is horribly wounded. It is about to go down. It is on its last legs. Any bit of damage will probably take it out. Okay. Come on, Aster. Here we go. I got three <laughs> shots. Oh, no. Let's see. <laughs> you just set that <laughs> no. up to him. For the love of God. I rolled a natural <laughs> one, so I have to roll the fumble table. First, you got to roll to confirm. We're not. We're, we're doing a thing where you have to confirm fumbles. Just to remind the listeners, it's because at these high levels, it, it, because players get so many attacks, it's kind of ridiculous that they also fumble more often, so we're making them roll to confirm. So roll another attack just to see if this one would also miss. And if that's the case, then it's a fumble. So I rolled a 19. Okay, so you would hit this thing. So it's not a fumble, it's just a miss. Now roll again. Ah, oh, 19. That was almost a natural 20. 19 plus... A 19 is a hit. Uh, stuff. Okay, let's just do the damage and see what happens. Yep. 
Uh, six plus five, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 damage? All right, this creature falls and it sort of slides off the wing and begins falling to the ground. And as it's dying, you think maybe it kind of smiles at you. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, no. What? <laughs> what? And at that moment, suddenly something strange happens. Oh, no. uh, First of all, the <laughs> Umber Hulk just sort of goes limp. Well, that's nice at least. And Tara, you come to your senses as you're standing out here on the wing. And the Neogi ship suddenly begins falling. What? It was the it pilot. Was the, it was the pilot, and therefore there is no longer No, we're dead. A All pilot. of our people. <laughs> our ship. Let me warn you guys, this session might be a little short. As we all die. Well, okay, that's one way it might be short. <laughs> Why is, who's beeping here? Let me turn this off. It's Jake. From State Farm? <laughs> Come on, Jake. We're playing games over here. <laughs> I was thinking State Farm too. <laughs> uh, Josh and Jessica, I am so spoiled by using this for Pathfinder. I keep wanting to go look at the list of roles to yeah. find out if he hit. Uh, it's It's weird going back to physical dice. And I don't trust the, the D&D 5e implementation enough to try to do all that. Yeah. How do I um, play the rest of my character? I don't That's, know. I don't have that uh, answer. I, don't, I think I roll a thing and there's there's sneak attack damage somewhere in here. Yeah. And... yeah. How does how does uh, D&D Beyond work? <laughs> this is such a great tool, though. I mean, it really is great. Okay, so I roll that, then I roll. Okay, I figured it out, everybody. <laughs>